What is up, everybody? It is Thursday night. Grab something cold to drink. Get your favorite koozie. We are doing Jackson Kayak Doc Talk with these two guys. awesome button you can find these on amazon they're great they don't cost a lot welcome back to doc talk everybody glad to have you here um in our house tonight let's go around the room introduced our i don't know if we call you contestants guests co-hosts i don't know what they are we'll start at the bottom with mr just introduce yourself tell us where you're from tell us what boat you're in What's up, guys? Um, I'm Justin. I am from New York, Central New York. I uh, hope you can hear me all right. Um, I uh, I fish out of a Jackson Nar. Uh, love it. Love it. I also have a take two uh, for the family getaways <laughs> and uh, and a U pick. Um, I love those boats. Uh, um, Central New York, uh, fish NYKBF and a bunch of other uh, regional events and uh, hopefully get a have some time to get into some national uh, events this coming year too. So that's me. Mike, uh, tell us a little bit about you, where you're from and uh, all that fun stuff. Sorry, we froze there. So it's, you're up, man. Just uh, tell us I'm about not- you. Tell us where you're from and, <laughs> Uh, I'm Mike Blatt. I call New Orleans, Louisiana home. Uh, I do not care about missing Thursday night football for this. Uh, I, I know I'm going to catch flack later for that, but uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I live in Hanover, New Hampshire now. Uh, moved up here uh, a few years ago. Lived in Park City, Utah for a while during my ski days. I'm one of those former whitewater boaters. You know, I was I was on the Ocoee. I was on the Nantahala. I ended up in the Green River Narrows. Uh, spent a few years there just, uh, you know, back in mid-2000s. And then once I realized what creaking looked like, I traveled the world, went to Europe, went to Australia to go find some the coolest water on the planet. And then uh, I have a six-year-old daughter and I'm married eight years. And uh, during COVID, I got a whitewater kayak again after a 15-year hiatus. And my wife just said, you know, you're, you're not 25 anymore. So you, you can still do this kayaking thing, but, you know, uh, you might want to try something else. So I uh, took her sit on top one day, paddled across the river and caught more fish than I did from shore. And then uh, started drilling holes in her boat and then realized there was this entire culture of kayak fishing. So mm-hmm. I live right on the Connecticut River that divides Vermont and New Hampshire, right in the central part of the states. And I have uh, two Jackson Nars. Uh, long story short, uh, my wife was concerned about how much money I was spending on kayak fishing. So I started a guide service and it kind of took <laughs> off. So I put my clients in the same boat that I'm paddling. And I also had two big tunas. I had two big rigs, but I'm slowly going more into the pedal drive world. So uh, next spring, I will have four pedal drive Jackson kayaks to take all my guests out in. That is a really awesome story, man. Um, first off, welcome to the team, man. For Thank those you. Of you. Don't know Mike is uh, he's a new he's a noob, still noob, not really a noob, <laughs> but a noob. But uh, yeah, new to the program, and we're happy to have you on board, man. Um, so that that's really awesome coming from whitewater to to the end of the fishing side that's a 
that's a good way to lead into, you know, kind of talk about paddling. I know, Justin, you still like to paddle a lot. You still paddle quite a bit, actually. Mm -hmm. And Mike being a paddler, I mean, you know, do you feel like that you're always going to yearn for just a good paddle boat? Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. I think uh, I think for tournament days, you know, obviously it's good to have that NAR. It's good to have that, uh, you know, ability to kind of cruise and get get to point A to point B, carry all your all your stuff, and you know, and just uh, be able to sit out there for eight, ten hours a day or whatever have you. But uh, yeah, for me, I mean, I know I can I know I can go out and get one, but for me, my uh, my biggest regret in the paddling in my short or my paddling career is getting rid of that Liska. Ah, I miss yeah. that. Thing. I miss that thing so much. It was such a beautiful boat. And I know my local dealer, he, he tells me every day he's got a couple there in the showroom for, and he's like, I never you want them. And I'm like, ah, gosh, I know. But, uh, that, that, those boats, there's something so nice about just getting out on, uh, you know, just a, a quiet, jackson for your paddle and just cruising and um there's something special about that i tell you what the liska has made more dock talk appearances than any has it oh yeah 100 percent. i think it's <laughs> i think it's been quoted on every episode along with the by fd <laughs> how about yeah, you mike I, you still uh still into the paddle or yeah you know it's when i first so when my wife told me that she didn't want me drilling any more holes in her kayak, uh, <laughs> my first boat, I, you know, got on Facebook marketplace, looked for a, you know, a fishing kayak. And I just found one that was going to fit with trading in my whitewater boat real quick. And, you know, came with a basket with some rod holders. And I got one of those old, like a uh, Mirage, I guess it's a big kind of a beginner kayak, uh, fishing kayak. And it was, you know, sat down in the water. I was, I was convinced I needed to earn my fish. Uh, I'm, I'm my blog post right now. My first one for Jackson, the team member. So I'm trying not to give the whole thing away, but I, I, I felt like I needed to paddle for a workout. And that's what I told my wife. I'm like, I'm going to go do, you know, do a stretch on the river. I'm going to, you know, earn, you know, burn some calories. And so I would paddle and that's where I was, I was convinced myself that I needed to, get a workout in because fishing wasn't a workout. And then I got the big tuna because I needed a tandem boat. I, I felt like I, I could be more instructional with my clients, especially the younger kids, having them either face me or be in the same boat with me. And that being 35 inches wide, still easy enough to paddle. And I could use my Werner bent creaking paddle that I still have for my person up front. And I had the bigger paddle in the back. And then it came time to the big rig, which was 40 inches wide. And, uh, you know, that's propped up I needed a 250 centimeter paddle, which was, you know, brand new to me. And now with the NAR, as long as I don't have, you know, my fish finder positioned here or the box positioned here, and uh, I still have that paddle that's long enough, I, I forgot my pedal drive the other day. And uh, Jim actually reached out to me on uh, Facebook. I posted the photo of my missing pedal drive, but the day I still got to have and got to pedal the NAR around. And uh, my batteries were in the boat. Uh, my motor was not on the boat. And it was a solid 140 you know, pounds that I was paddling around oh, without yeah. me included. And the thing tracked, you know, and, oh, and, yeah. and that was one of the cool things when I first got into serious kayak fishing well how do i bridge this if i'm a whitewater paddler if i've paddled long boats and i go to a kayak company that also makes whitewater boats that's just really cool that's how and that's how i picked the brand of the first kayaks i was going to get but it's 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 been a learning process and it still is a workout and man when you earn those strokes uh you know when you're going miles on end those fish just seem to be better yeah that's and I, and I think there's a time and a place right too because i mean especially yeah. up here you know i you know i there's months where you can't get a pedal drive through a water it through the water i mean it's just it's more more of a headache than it is you know so 
planning accordingly and getting out on the water in a in a in a boat that you can just skim right on top of everything and and just cruise is important so i mean that's that's good to keep in mind too with with the body of water of what you're going to be fishing um you know but but yeah 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 i will I say it. that one day uh it was one of was it the i think it was either the first day in the nar uh, we had about 20 days in june of some brutal wind up here in vermont and yeah. uh i just i didn't strap the paddle down on the edge of the boat and i didn't even notice it until the end of the day the fishing was so great and i was like you know what it was worth losing that brand new werner yeah. uh pad i mean it was Ooh. it was so worth it but i i i went to the hotel on the lake and i said hey guys i know you have a power boat can we go cruise the lake real quick help me look for my paddle and <laughs> after about a half hour they were like they were like man it's gone i'm sorry but I, nice it, was it. <laughs> it, it was worth it was so worth it that's pretty cool. No, that's awesome. And, and you know, the NAR is a phenomenal paddle boat, which people may not realize about the NAR. They see the pedal drive and the new Flex Drive Mark IV, and they're like, oh, wow, check this thing out. And it, but I yeah. mean, the Instagram story that I used tonight is actually a photo of me paddling the NAR. And then you can paddle it just as fast as you can pedal it a lot of times. I mean, it it moves and yeah, it cruises. When you've got to be in a stealthy situation and you don't really need the pedals and you're just kind of meandering through a grass flat like Cayuga. Yeah. Or, uh, you know. I did that here, many times this summer. Yeah, <laughs> here, at, uh, here at our wonderful lakes, they've, we've got a lot of grass and, you know, I'll kick the pedal drive up and I call it four-wheel drive. You know, you grab the paddle and off you go. There you go. It's it's a really, it's a really great feature to all of our um, pedal boats and they all actually paddle pretty good even like the kusa fd justin i think we would agree that boat it paddles pretty good yeah the kusa fd was not was yeah it, it, i mean it's a good paddling boat so i think that that says a lot about the boats um so you guys have had big years obviously um mike you're guiding justin has been running tournaments up in new york um how's this how was summer for you guys i mean what'd you guys get into and kind of elaborate on uh, what you guys been doing yeah, for me, for me, summer's been good. I um, uh, we had a great year for our, for the local trail in NYKBF here. Um, had thirteen events that we hosted throughout the year, and a couple charity events, and uh, uh, I, yeah, about a month ago already, can you uh, had our championship two day event on Cuca Lake, which was uh, just smally heaven. It was just really the the bags coming up are just really nice, so. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I chalked that up as a big success. We had, you know, um, biggest turnouts we've ever had, hopefully, uh, that, uh, had a blast fishing up on New York. Yeah. Heck yeah. Adam. And then he moves down South and then now he's, you know, now he's like, he's, he's in my, well, he's three hours from me, but, uh, oh yeah. But, but no. yeah, no. and then, so big things going, we're already in the planning for 2023. We're working with, uh, other trails in the in the state to bring like some big events to our to new york state and really change what kayak fishing is all about up here which i'm pretty pumped about um you know working with some national trails as well too so uh yeah some big things coming for 2023 so uh but yeah no focusing on 2022 we had you know it was a great year i got out got got to fish myself which was really nice um planning on going out on sunday if uh we got a one more looks like one more really nice week weekend weather wise up here in New York. So uh gonna go get some hopefully get some nice smallies and then uh just end the end the season on a high note. <laughs> That's my game plan. <laughs> oh man, and you you work hard at it. For those of you who don't follow uh KBF New York or yeah, NYKBF, make sure you follow that on um on the Facebook and on the Instagram because Justin puts in a lot of work and they've they really put out a lot of good content and it's a really well run trail. Uh lots of good sponsors and lots of people working with that trail that make it what it is. Um so definitely check them out. Even if you're not in the area, it's still worth a follow. Um give those guys a little support up there in New York. Thanks, Chad. That means a lot. Thank you. And I'm looking, my, I'm looking forward to getting over there next year, Justin. Uh, Chad, I so when Justin first reached out to me, uh, you know, 
it was, I think I filled out my Jackson team application in March uh, when mm -hmm. I was picking up my brand new trailer in Ashboro, North Carolina and picking up my, my first two big rigs. And uh, I was like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send these guys some photos. I'm going to fill out this application. And uh, when I first talked to Justin and everything, you know, he, uh, he said, I want to invite you to the team. I, I said, have, have you seen my application? You're asking a bunch of questions that I, I, I'd love for you to read my answers that I, I don't want to give you the same thing. And he said, no, man, haven't seen your application. Um, one of the things that I said to him is, uh, you know, I'm going to start having to do tournaments because I, I haven't done any. Uh, you know, right. every tournament I almost entered, uh, I got a last minute trip. And it's, it's hard to turn down people who want to learn how to kayak fish. So uh, right. my wife is a Army combat veteran. Uh, she served seven tours in Afghanistan as oh, a awesome. uh, specialist in uh, the 160th in uh, helicopter aviation intelligence. So anything wow. veteran driven, veteran built, wow. uh, anything we can do to support any military veteran venture. Uh, so Heroes on the Water popped up and there was a tournament, it was a month long and they had regions and North, Northeast had a region. I said, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this finally. And uh, I was in first place the first weekend, second weekend, third weekend. And then this 20 year old kid from Pennsylvania pulls ahead with a couple 20 inch bass. And man, I've never been so disappointed in catching <laughs> 17, 17 inch smallmouth bass on the river. And, and well, you know, welcome I, I, to month long tournaments, man. Yep. I'm, 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 catching, I'm, long catching, I'm catching six and seven pound bass in the river, but wow. they're they're this big around, they are this long <laughs> so uh you know but that was that was just the last month this whole year has been great um i got to do my first three-day overnight with three 16 year olds all on jackson boats um i got to do a couple uh lots of lots of learning with some kids who uh one actually it was last year had one kid with a, a learning disability couldn't really put pictures in order you know, in a normal school assignment, nine years old, and the kid could operate a fishing rod and could paddle a kayak. And there's wow. nothing more rewarding and instant gratification lined than fishing. And it's, mm -hmm. it was just so cool seeing, and, and I have a very instructional approach. You know, I, I, I don't like giving them a little bit and then saying, well, let's book another trip, you know, come back later. I know it's a bad business right. model. But I really like people leaving me knowing that they can do this on their own. And now that I've discovered outdoor New England in Franklin, New Hampshire, uh, through mm -hmm. Justin, there's an easy way when people come fishing with me, they say, hey, where do we get these boats? Well, go talk to Marty at Outdoor New England, O-N-E. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's been a great start of a relationship. And it's been great meeting Justin, great meeting the other team guys. Uh, there's a team guy from New Orleans that lives on the coast of Monterey, uh, where my brother lives. I'm going to go fishing with him. Uh, <laughs> it's, it, it, it's, it's really cool. This, this whole network of people. Quite a few. Quite uh, a few. Yes. Yeah. Long, long answer to your short question, Chad. My summer has been great. Caught some amazing fish, but the past two, was it been two weeks, Justin? Just being on the team for two weeks has been great. Lots to think about and looking forward to a lot next year. Well, we're happy to have you, man. Um, you guys kind of both accidentally brought up a very interesting topic, month-long tournaments online. <laughs> That's – so is is the – obviously winning tournaments in person is always going to trump the month-long. Do you feel that at this point in the kayak game that month-longs are still, like, valid? Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 the way that I look, the way that I look at month, month longs, not to jump in and anything, but as a, as a director putting together the community that I want to put together, I want to make sure that people are comfortable and learning mm -hmm. at their own pace. And let's face it, you know, and, and, you know, Mike, I, I think you brought up a good point too about, you know, not doing live tournaments and, you know, you don't have to do live tournaments to be welcomed into a national you know, uh, brand like Jackson kayak, like it's not, right. that's, 
I mean, sure, it's important. I mean, and, and it's 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 cool, but it's not everything. It's that mindset of what you you know that you're pushing out on social media and to the to the kayak community. I mean, that's what you know. Your comments and photos are what caught my eye first off and foremost. And I yep. think that by only pushing live events and making the tournament the in-person tournaments like as important as they are i think it's it's important but it's pushing away people and it's scaring people away from from like you know really getting involved so i mean we nykbf has a month-long tournament every all month from april to october and we and we encourage people if they're on the fence about coming to a live event jump in a right. month long learn at your own you know learn at your own pace you know get on our um you know get on our message boards and our in our facebook chats and things like that and meet people and you know go out and fish you know a month long on a lake that you feel comfortable fishing and you know and just that's how people learn that's how people go and enjoy it um you know and uh i think and it's, I it's think the banter back and forth you know a, a good friend of mine who is a very competitive uh sponsored fisherman and he you know he's done all these tournaments and i've always fished with him and he'll he'll say hey, i'm gonna go fish to you know get some fish to you know move me up uh you should come with me where are you going i'm not gonna tell you and uh <laughs> you know well it's funny he sent me a screenshot of the map with the you know everything blacked out but That's if funny. you know anything <laughs> about lakes and ponds in this area and also, if you know the name of the road that he left, un, you know, left marked on the, the top corner, it's like, okay, I know right where that is, man. Um, but the banter back and forth, it, it was so much fun having friends yeah. in that tournament for that month. Like, hey, dude, I just went here. Uh, I used to think I was catching big smallmouth bass, but I can't unseat my 19-inch largemouth. What I, I, I thought they were longer. You know, it, it, was, it was just so much fun. Uh, you know, and, and then realizing that Pennsylvania and Kentucky were in the same bracket in the tournament right. as sure. Vermont, New Hampshire and Maine. Wow. You know, sure. so I, we don't grow them as big up here, but they don't get out. They don't get as fished up here. So it was it was really cool being able to compete with with those other guys. Um, I, I don't know about going national. You know, I'm scared of the Texas size bass, to be honest, in the tournaments, but it. But, you know, it's like you said, just, I mean, April to October, that would be so much fun. Yep. And, and, and charity event. It's, it's amazing. I've, so my rod showed up today. It was a no cash prize, but I've got $500 mm -hmm. worth of tackle and yeah. it, 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 it's amazing. And the, the, the backpacks and the boxes and the only difference between first, second and third place was an extra fishing rod here, extra fishing rod there. And most of those prizes are donated. And we're talking about a $50 entry fee and some yeah. people entered and they had zero points for fish. You know, they, they yeah. were there to support the event and it's, and those are going to keep going and those I will always compete in. And uh, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting over to New York. Uh, you know, the uh, I'd like to, uh, that I'm currently almost at one more exam in New Hampshire to go for the New York guide license next. That's a whole new level. And those yeah. guys are very cool. Are amazing, amazing people. Uh, there's a group up in the Adirondacks, Battlefish Charters. Um, yep. Can't wait to meet them during ice fishing season. Which he's uh, on we'll the talk team. about Orion. He's, a, he's, a, we'll he's talk about a, Orion Coolers later for ice fishing season. Yeah, AJ is <laughs> actually a member of our of the Jackson Kayak Fishing Team. Yep. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Good dude. <clears throat> he's a, he's and, a veteran as well, I believe. Veteran. You know, yeah. What we do, talking about the month longs and the different things, what we do with measuring the fish on the boards and getting comfortable with that does take some time. I mean, I can remember, and Justin, you can speak to this too, when we, everything first really got going, I mean, you would see the the death grip on a fish where <laughs> like the eyes were bulging out and like it was like had the five pound body in its head <laughs> where everybody just, I mean, bear clawed them. So yeah. I think, you know, that's where stuff like the onlines and stuff are very helpful. You get to really process and go through that routine and it goes such a long way. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Every, everything adapts. And I think that, um, you know, I know I saw, I saw somebody talking about the lead loading and stuff, but yeah, you know, it's, it's hard. 
it's hard to get away with with the apps and everything that we have and the you know the, we only do catch boards now and i know a lot of people have have just gone to catch catch boards and i i think that's done a lot for the for the the um the sport just for you know that everybody's running on the same board and it's just you know there's no there's no flimsy you know kind of uh you know you don't you don't have to worry about it so i think yep. that's really nice um but again yeah i i think there i think there's something that that has to be said about you know somebody that's weary about you know joining a group joining a community and mm -hmm. uh you know a live online or a live like in-person event i it scare people away you know and, yeah. and being able to say you know all right well join this fish on your own time who who said it over there the nine to five uh yeah um yeah. you know I, yeah i work all day long i can't go fishing with with you know people in the middle of the day but i you know i could sure jump out ever for a few hours you know after work someday and you know go to my you know favorite spot and just learn but yeah 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 and that's i think the definite benefit to online tournaments is there's just so so much time to learn and it really is a great introductory introductory way into our sport like yeah. you said justin i mean some of the live events can be intimidating if you think that you're not on the same level as jimmy over there with his nar fd and two fish finders and exactly. power poles and torpedoes and exactly. you know there's there's a lot of guys out there that can still go out there and paddle a boat um like we was talking and catch fish and hold their own in these tournaments i mean the skill levels are all over the place i think um one of the doc talks matt ball was talking you know there's a lot of guys at the local level that are not fishing the big events or traveling to the big events that are real hammers and you know they fish the local event because they are that nine to five guy and they can get out there and crush them just the same as you know the guys fishing the national stuff Definitely. and you know those are people that when you go to these um local events that you can learn a lot from actually yeah yeah i agree and there's, there's also a lot of guys that you'll meet you know i i uh, saw a guy fishing the same lake that i do a lot of my tours on mm -hmm. um and he he actually loved my trailer so much that <laughs> he took the contact info and he called the guys at on the water innovations like the next day and they texted me they're like hey we just got a deposit for a trailer uh you know this guy met you at the lake but he won't <laughs> fish with me the guys he's uh i think he's he's retired special forces army and uh you know we, we talked a bit we talked at the beginning of the day when we put in and mm -hmm. he'll go the opposite direction on the lake it's a 740 acre lake and i won't see him till the end of the day he doesn't want to fish with anybody mm -hmm. and so right. some of these online tournaments are allowing people to go to these small ponds and small lakes and they don't have to go with a crowd of people they don't right. have to turn up uh you know i was stressed and and the, yeah. i was feeling really good on this lake there was a huge fast tournament going on and i convinced them I could keep up the guys in the power boats. And they said, if you show up at the live well, you're, you're welcome to join. And it, right. it I, I almost did it. I, I was, I was this <laughs> close. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I was like, you know what? It's, it's so crowded. I'm going to be the guy taking an extra five minutes to unload his boats at the ramp. And it's going to cause this issue. Right. But you have people who do this sport to go by themselves. They didn't get yeah. a bass boat because their friends, they didn't have to take their friends with them. You know, it's like, right. how do I get away from these people during the week? You know, I got to do something more solo. And that's, that's the crazy thing about when I, when I hear about the Jackson kayak fishing team, even the whitewater uh, team, you know, it's, we, we, we do have individual events, but there's a camaraderie around the people, the goal, the aim that we're all looking for is to give that one person that experience that if they want it on their own, fine. But if they went with a group of people, they can have it. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Now, talking about trailers, you must be an on the water. You're an obviously an on the water innovations guy. I got to see check out Jameson's trailer <laughs> again up close. I was there when he got it. I was there, you know, when he first brought it into uh, the factory for the first time, and then I got to see it again last weekend. Those are some sweet trailers. 
they really are. Um, for you guys that don't know on the water innovations, you should really check them out. I, I yearn for one. Yeah. Deeply. I'm, yeah. I'm I don't know how either. They I'm are, not, they I'm are definitely not. It. I'm not here to plug it, but I am selling mine. Not because I don't like <laughs> it, but, but I realize I need a bigger one. You want to upgrade it though. You know, I, I, I need to, you know, this, this summer. Not like you're uh, selling it not to get another yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Denny and Mike posted so Denny and Mike uh, post video or photos of all their trailers that go out. And there yep. was one that had a built in Weber grill. I seen and that. I was like, okay, how, how, do, how do you outdo that? And so I, I, I said, you know what, can we put a Traeger on it? Can we put a green egg on it? I mean, there's, if there's, if there's anything you can do is slow cook something while you're fishing for eight hours and come back <laughs> to your trailer and you're ready. I mean, you must on. not be fishing with the same people I do because there wouldn't be nothing <laughs> left to eat when I got back. Right, right, right. That's funny. But, uh, That's funny. you know, the uh, I got one of those bed extenders. You know, I had two mm. big tunas. I could take three people fishing and with all the batteries and everything, you know, you have some very nice people up here who want to help you load kayaks. Mm. And this one guy just was not taking no for an answer. Mike, let oh, me yeah. help you load this. You know, I, I feel bad just leaving you. You know, the sun's going down and I said, okay, we're going to pick this up. We're going to go left. Um, I don't think he knew it was right from his left, but he went right. I went left and my back, I was two days into my forties. Okay. Oh. This is two days after my birthday and I heard it before I felt it. And then uh, I was bedridden Ooh. for five days. Um, I have some of my neighbors who are on the chat right now. They, they're they're watching this right now. They they can attest to this. They were at my birthday party, and then they, you know, a week later, they're like, "What happened to you, man?" Oh, um, man. I I, I went to my wife and I said, "Listen, I'm getting one of these trailers, and it has been worth every penny. I drove all the way down there, uh, went mm. red fishing on the coast of North Carolina, uh, went to a backwoods pond, caught an eight pound bass while I was there. You know, nice. made made a trip out of it." Drove it all the way back up here with two big rigs on it, and then have loaded it up since. Uh, it's it, it's it's really amazing what those guys do and how well they they service their customers uh, mm. like Jackson does. If there's right. an issue, I think I had an issue with a, a spring on the rod tube, and I texted Denny and about it. And he knew everything, you know. And days later, it shows up and. That's one of the things I love about them and I love about Jackson's. The customer service experience is as good as the product. Shout no out doubt. to Matt and Charlie. No doubt. Mike, Mike, you're from Louisiana, right? So you fish for redfish a lot? Uh, so when I was in, so I moved out of New Orleans when I was 14. Um, uh -huh. I think every time my dad and I were going to go red fishing, it was on one of his friend's boats. We never owned a boat. Um, and we always, it for some reason the tide was too low and they said we're going to the oil rigs we're going for blackfin tuna and we just trolled okay. for tuna okay honestly didn't start red fishing until uh let's say charleston south carolina my daughter's six so five years ago uh, i had my first good red fishing trip and we couldn't keep any of the fish mm. because they were that big it was it was amazing the hit that those red drum or red fish have. And then uh, on the coast of North Carolina in inshore, it, it's incredible. And just these, these winnings from this tournament, I got one of those inshore boxes and right on there, it's a snook and it's a red fish. And these, these red fish tournaments, I have not put these boats in salt water yet. And I'm, I am, I am this close to just saying, you know, I'm going on a Southern tour next year. I'm going to do sure. find a month long redfish tournament and go crash at somebody's house in North Carolina. Nice. I do. Uh, I, we, my family does a, an outer banks trip every, every summer. And uh, one of my, one of my like musts is I, I have a buddy that's on another team with me that lit, that is a, has a guide service down there that he takes me out once one, uh, one morning. And we usually go for, uh, for trout, and, you know, different things, flounder, which was fun. Uh, but this year, this past this past June, I got my first redfish ever, and uh, on light tackle and everything. So I was, it was like, I think I fought it for a good, you know, half an hour or whatever on the yep. kayak, and it was just so much fun. It was such a fun fish, but yeah, and I ate it because I got to keep it. So I, <laughs> I, I I ate it. 
So they say once red fishing gets matter. you, it's got you. You know, I mean, red fishing yep. is. They say it's better I, you know, bass fishing. I'm scared to try it because I love green fish too. No, so. I, you know, you can't, you can't, for me, you can't beat, you can't beat bass fishing, but um, you know, that's the, the nice thing about up here. And I, you know, you guys probably have the same, but every lake is different for me. So it's like, if I want to go, if I want to hunt uh tiger musky, I got a, I got a lake a half an hour away. If I want Northern Pike, I got a lake a half an hour away. If I want Smalley, you know, it's um, it's, I think I think up here is pretty cool to live in. It's just uh, it's just you so, got some so diverse. very diverse fishing in the yeah. New York and I area. I think the the like the the national trails and the the majors the you know bass boating leagues and things are mm -hmm. are starting to catch on that. I mean I know they always knew, but some of these bags that they're pulling out and next year's schedules that are releasing as every other week's up here in New York. So, I mean, people are a yeah. hundred pounds of smallmouth on the St. Lawrence river this past yeah. year by yeah. multiple individuals, which I, was phenomenal. I was watching MLF, uh, on Cuga, uh, you know, a couple months ago or whenever they were here, you know, and, and, uh, that's a, that's a lake I've fished my whole life. And I just, the fish that they were pulling out of that lake, I, I was like, I, I, was, I felt like I didn't know the lake at all. And oh, I knew yeah. exactly where everybody was fishing. I knew the like every spot, but they're just they're just different breed, man. It's just a a different breed of of anglers uh, there, which is pretty cool. But um, it's nice to see that the the lakes up here are getting healthy again. They're getting the fish are are getting stronger. They're getting bigger. Um, yeah, it's a cool it's a cool time. <laughs> There's nothing like going for a ride when you hook one of those fish. You know, it's when when the boat turns because mm -hmm. of what you're reeling in, and yep. I mean, and let alone when you're standing. I mean, the whole reason I went bow mounted trolling motor is I I really wanted to get more into. I wanted to replace my spinning rod collection with bait casters, and I, I just needed that extra little you know height because I'm I'm five right. seven and a half. Um, but I resemble that statement. It was, it's crazy when you hook the <laughs> fish and the boat starts tracking toward the fish. Now the gnar, not so much. The gnar mm -hmm. holds its holds its track, but some yeah. of those more flat bottom kayaks. I mean, sure. and and it's it's so much fun. It and you get the medium heavy rods so that you can stay on the fish, and right. it, and it's it, it really is cool feeling that extra oomph in that fight of that fish and. I can't wait to catch a redfish or something. I, I was watching the the episode eight last week, and I mm -hmm. can imagine pulling a marlin on a kayak. You know, right? no. two hours that of was, fighting fish. No, sir. That was a that was an <laughs> incredible story. It really was. Wow. Jim has seen Jim has seen a lot. Jameson's yeah. seen a lot more than he <laughs> than he lets on too. Jameson's seen a lot of good fishing. Yeah, um, those, guys, those guys have seen a lot. You're right. But uh, talking about the big tuna, have you had a try chance to try the take two yet, Mike? I have not. Uh, so Outdoor New England has uh, a brand new truck of boats that are coming with one of my new boats uh, next week. Mm -hmm. Hopefully nice. the, the weather's going to get back up to the, the 60s, 70s, which I'm very excited about. Um, but Marty at Outdoor New England said, if you love the tuna, you got to try the take two. And I'm gonna, I think I'm going to pick one up next yeah, year yeah. just because it's, it's so simple to get a smaller child between the age of six and 12 sitting facing at you, you know, cause they're very visual mm -hmm. learners. Uh, my daughter especially loved, I loved having the trolling motor on the front of my big tuna uh, mm -hmm. and then putting her there on, you know, some of those, those random off school days that they don't tell you about till like the day before. Um, <laughs> and I, I can't Future stand it. Fishing with her is, you know, by the time you get a line in the water, she's like, I got another one. I got another one. Mm -hmm. And those two pound smallies at 25 feet in July and August, uh, awesome. you know, they take up most of her time. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'm looking forward to it. I, uh, I think it's, I want to say it was Gene. Uh, Gene called the color of the uh, take to uh, uni unicorn something, unicorn fart. Maybe. Yep. And, uh, yep. and, uh, prism. Uh, prism. Yeah. prism. Yeah. 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 Uh, whatever, whatever it is. But I, I really want one in that color. Cause I think it just, it, 
it's it's really cool looking and i think kids would love it and so i just need to have one of those but uh how wide is that is that the same 35 inches wide um it's it's wide but i'm okay i should know that off the top of my head and <laughs> too, but we and, don't and that look goes at, solo configuration no, i think it's 35 yeah it's 35 or bigger um yeah so i just actually picked up my first take two uh last weekend and last friday and got it out on the water for the first time saturday holy cow that boat yeah. paddles well yeah it it's drifts boat. well and my gosh does it carry a load i mean <laughs> you can uh you can put whatever you want on that i know justin you've had yours out a lot more here than i have but uh Maybe you can talk about that just a little. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a great boat. It's very versatile. I know when I first got it, I, I was planning on rigging it as my tournament kayak because at the time I didn't know how, when I would get my NAR. So right. um, I was, I was planning on rigging it like, uh, uh, well, I think, I think it was Chris Funk that, that put the, the torpedo on it at, at the time. Yeah. I'm sure other people have, you know, since then, but. I had that all rigged out, ready to go, and kind of decided to take a pivot and make the U pick that 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 boat with the torpedo and um, keep my keep the uh, take two as a as a traditional paddle kayak for family outings and stuff. And yeah, um, you know, to be able to get you know, I have a two year old and my wife, and put you know, we put him right in the middle and. He can kind of walk around a little bit if we want if he wanted to, like you said, is well, you were you know, you're talking a little older, but I mean two-year-old, his attention span is you know, oh, yeah. so it's like <laughs> nano you know, just, just making him just making him have a good time is is a chore. But uh man, that boat and especially, you know, I know we talk everybody talks about them all the time, but those tri tracks, man. Um, are those awesome. are so those are so much fun. And uh, you know, the amount of stuff that you could put on, I know that was it's kind of the one just, hard thing about you know boats in the past is you want everything you know in a certain location and you, if you wanted you, you could never do that unless you wanted to install other tracks and now with those you can you literally can do whatever the heck you want which is pretty yeah, cool you can stack literally stack stuff on top of stuff and it's just yeah. awesome and for but, the record and, we were and, all and three wrong trailer. you don't need you a trailer with that boat you know it's so right. many, these other boats uh, i was fortunate enough or fortunate enough uh to show up uh when the jackson trailer got to uh one a couple weeks ago and my boat of course you know how you stack a semi-trailer if anybody knows how mm -hmm. to stack a trailer you put the heaviest stuff up front right behind right. the other hundred boats so my boat is at the very front and I, rob yeager was there and uh you know i was like all right i'll i'll help unload the boats and we're pulling out the U pick. We're pulling out the bite. We're pulling out even with the Mark IV built in some of these boats. And yeah. you, one person could carry it. It it's incredible. You can still have the roof racks. You can still have the whitewater boat stackers. You know, and still <laughs> pack some of those uh, Jackson kayaks, the fishing kayaks, on top of your car. You do not need a truck. You can take it with a Honda Civic. You, can, I've seen them on yeah, test no yeah, I always thought that way about Jackson that they they really have that kind of mindset of, you know, every detail is really thought out. Even even the blue sky. I remember I remember getting my first blue sky, mm -hmm. you know, when they first came out. What five years ago? Maybe maybe more than that. Yeah, um, close. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, I just thought I just thought it was the coolest thing. This ginormous <laughs> boat kayak. Uh, and they made it so effortless to 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 maneuver and to move around, and you know you kind of just hungered right in the middle there, and you had your two hands holding. It. I mean, it was very it, it was very well thought, and I thought that way about every boat since then and beyond. Is th that it's just been, you know, kind of with every end goal in in mind, which is pretty cool. That's yeah. that's my and next end goal is the blue sky. We we were all three way off. Um, 37 inches. <laughs> well, you said or bigger. You said or 30 bigger. Right? or bigger. So, or bigger. This, this, 37. So, I mean, you're, you're yeah, right. by 13, nine for the, for the folks at home. So it is, uh, she's a big boat, but she's a cool oh, boat. Yeah. She is a very cool boat. Um, so 
what do you guys got coming up for uh for the end of the year here's finale are we wrapping up i mean what's on the what's on the docket for the rest of the year yeah well yeah so uh <laughs> Just as uh, like nor- snow, as, as, as northern boys, right? It's like football season, and you know hibernation. Um, Mike's got his wine that he's gonna be drinking all the time. But I didn't interrupt uh, the Bills game, did I? No, 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 no Bills okay. game. You got you okay. Bye week. You're good, man. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, you, no, you know I I haven't I haven't been able to dive into to to ice fishing. I I just can't get into it. I wish I could. I really do. A lot of people up here do it, obviously, but um, I just haven't. I just haven't had the opportunity to do that. So a lot of the next few months for me is is planning and prepping for for NYKBF's next season. Um, April April's here before we know it, and we do our biggest event of the year there. We do a charity event for uh, suicide awareness and prevention. Mm-hmm. Um, it's always it's always our biggest event. We we. We we hit over a hundred anglers a year at that one, um, so I you know I really try to go all out and do that for for our local charity. So I I spend a good I spend a quite a bit of time planning prepping that. So um, <laughs> that's my winner pretty much. <laughs> and oh and and work life right and no and, and real work. <laughs> you you will see photos of Justin this winter with me on the ice i've told him that's that's one of my missions you know hey i I told you i told you i would do it i'll give it a try but i'm gonna be very vocal if i don't enjoy it yep i could see that i can see that i don't like being cold the older i get i'm finding i don't i am happy to tell everyone that i am a fair weather fisherman and i am fine (laughs) with that i don't want to be wet I want to be comfortable and I want to have a, a full belly. So if I'm hungry, I am going to be going and getting food. Justin, you <laughs> can come fishing it. anytime. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Chad, I had a couple of folks last year that called me uh, the day before their trip. And uh, they, they said, Hey, we went, uh, we went skiing today. And, you know, we were thinking about ice fishing and, you know, we didn't realize it would be so cold. Right. <laughs> and I said, what part of the title of the activity led you to believe that it was going to be warmer? Now we have the ice huts. Don't get me wrong. We, we, we can set those up. Uh, I'll fit charters. I was going to uh, say, have on. you seen some of these ice huts and like, yeah, they, they have, they have ice that are out there now? in the Midwest. It's, it's ridiculous. TVs. Oh, my, there, my new trip. My new trip is going to be, you know, I, so I'm from new Orleans. I take my food very seriously. You're going to, you're going to get a, you know, hot pot of something, you're going to get a bottle of something amazing. And we're going to, you're going to sit in a tent when the flag goes up outside the tent. I'm going to tell you to walk over here, not run on the ice, but uh, from here, you know, it's funny the past two years up in the upper Valley, Vermont, New Hampshire, December 1st, December 3rd, we've had a 70 degree day. The water is 42 degrees. And so as long as you have live bait, you know, at that point, we've gone to some of the creeks and we there's a little breeding uh, season or a, a migration that happens of some of the sucker fish up here. And if you mm-hmm. set the traps right, you get these armies of sucker fish for puck. That's awesome for ice fishing. You just got to keep them alive until ice in. Yeah. Right. But if you were to, you take some minnows, you take some night crawlers and you go put on some, you know, big old uh, slip bobbers. And this is where the biggest pike of the year without ice will bite. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. and and some of the biggest fish of the year. I mean, just yesterday I was on the water. I couldn't believe. Uh, I was like, all right, you know, we'll get some three pound bass, no problem. And this lake, I would say I've been fishing for two years, never caught anything over five and a half pounds. And yesterday he was six and a half, sorry, she was six and a half pounds and some wow. of the biggest fish right now they are trying to make sure that they're stuffed for winter and it's yep. some of the coolest time to fish and guess what nobody else is out there mm. no the lakes freeze after labor day yeah, yeah. I, I tell so you what you, 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 
you mix in some good food and some good beverages, I'm there. I think it would be a blast. I'm all right with that. I think there. I think it should be a a Jackson group event, a group bonding event. I think um, I would be all right with that. Done. Now, Chad, I'm going to take one of those Orion coolers. My mission this year is to make a uh, aerator that can mm -hmm. hook on to those. You know, I'm I'm going to uh, fabricate it somehow, but something that's sturdier than a five gallon bucket. Uh, right. That's what I use now. And, you know, on a cold day, those minnows, they don't last long and the ice will actually freeze in the bucket. And mm -hmm. yep. uh, I want to take one of those coolers and make it into my minnow bucket and uh, put some tracks on it, make it its own sled, you know. And, oh, you uh, just need you know, the flip flop cart, man. Yep. Yep. You just need a flip flop cart. That's all you need. And then you can put like a luggage rack on top of it. I mean, that's what we need. That's or. What we need to or that's, we that's, just we take the uh, we take the on the water innovations trailer, we put some skis, lock the wheels, <laughs> and I mean you know people drive their trucks on the ice. We had we had one lake that had twenty four inches of ice by February this year. It's a it's wow. a lot of ice, and I didn't believe it until I saw it. And somebody was driving their Cadillac Escalade on the ice, and that was just brave. Ooh, no, thank you. Um, no, I don't no, care how thick no, that is. I, no, I like my truck. I really do. I do too. I don't think I could. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't think I could do it. Nope. It's just a lot of pr planning and my cozy slippers for me. <laughs> Getting ready all winter long. I'm all right with that. I, springtime, you know, is first. You know, I'm, I'll be the first one out there in March or you know early April. If it's, you know, if though if it's obviously if the if we have uh, open water, but I just can't get into it. I don't know. Maybe I'm fishing with the wrong people. But well, you need to have some of those tournament eats at the ice fishing, and I think eh, that could sway you. That could sway. You. Good beverages go a long way. Good beverages good go point. a long That's way. A good point. Um, keep, keep you warm. Yeah, they do keep you warm. They do keep you warm. What's everybody drinking tonight? What are you drinking tonight, Justin? Where you at? Uh, I have a local brewery. Um, I am drinking a pumpkin ale, so don't don't at me if you don't like pumpkin ale. But um, <laughs> we are not judging. It's local brew. Uh, it's called Ardeus Brewery in Geneva. It's pretty cool. It's like an old uh, mansion that they like that they converted into a brewery right down the road from my house. It's pretty legit. That's so, cool. Yeah, it's pretty nice. We got a, a good. Um, the Finger Lakes area is booming with breweries lately. So, uh, adds to the destination. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. But you, How Mike, about you what guys? you got going on? Finger Lakes makes good wine, too. They, they uh, do. Great, great climate for certain grapes. Uh, they make some good white wines. Uh, so, I am drinking. So, um, I did want a beer tonight, but uh, with my former <laughs> life, I really had to have a glass of wine. Um, so I was in the wine industry for nine years. Again, my dad had a wine cellar down the, the hall from my room and when we lived in New Orleans. Uh, it's kind of where I got it. It's literally in my blood. Uh, my wife and I met in the wine industry. We actually got married at a vineyard in Italy, just trying nice. to escape cool. the crowds. This, this, was, this, was, <laughs> this was nothing fancy, except... My mother texted me a week before the wedding and she said, Hey, guess who's getting married in Florence two days before you, Kim and Kanye. And so <laughs> when, they, when they announced their divorce, my wife was like, Hey, listen, we outlasted Kim. Ye. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one, of, one of the first bottles that we, we were at the hotel in Italy, we were tired from traveling and this was on the menu. It's a simple little Chianti. Uh, and they sell it at the state liquor store in New Hampshire. And uh, it's unfortunately called Monsanto, but uh, it's not made by the same Monsanto you're thinking of. Uh, it's an actual vineyard in Italy. It's one of the oldest vineyards. And uh, Chianti is underpriced for what it is. You know, if you're, if you're trying to get into wine and you want something that's good, spend $20 on a Chianti. Hell, spend $10.99 on a Chianti and it'll yeah. out drink anything from California at that price, as long as you like highly acidic wines. Uh, and, and if you like pizza, save the money on the pizza, spend the money on the wine. 
and and I'm telling you, you bring some of this stuff out on the ice with you during the winter, and you're gonna have a good day. <laughs> stuff while fishing, you know, I've I've seen people that are c- curious about the taste that's in the bottom of their beer can while fishing and not realize what fell into that beer can. You know, this is a wide glass. I, I wouldn't want to fish, let alone with glass, but, or right. drinking wine. Camelbacks go a bottle. long way. You, know, you, drink out of bottle. <laughs> you, so you can do uh, it. What do you got, Chad? <laughs> so I've got, uh, I've got some black dog brewing. Uh, yeah. Graffiti Road, a New England IPA, because I'm talking mm-hmm. to boys in the Northeast tonight. Uh, special brew uh, out of uh, Mooresville, Indiana. So yeah, local brewery up there. Uh, new new upstart uh, started uh, open their doors around COVID, and yeah, nice. cool people. Uh, Jason Cassidy, our one of our listeners, actually uh, does a little part time work there when he is not on the road bassing. Wow, so okay. uh, yeah, kudos to kudos to Jason and the and the quality brew. It's my last one, Jason. Uh oh. Just saying. <laughs> I, I, I spaced them out the best I could. It's always good to have your good local breweries and uh and shouting distance, isn't it? Oh man, and you know, they they do so much for the different kayak events and stuff that goes on for kayak fishing. Yeah. It's always cool to see the local brews and, and people really appreciate that when they come to the different events. I know Justin, you work with a lot of them for your events and um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's been we, good we for have you. A, we have a really great partner in our events uh, um, called three brothers brewery, which is uh, actually a, uh, it's actually war horse brewery at three brothers winery. Mm-hmm. So it's like a, it's, it's a brewery and they have three wineries in the same compound uh ranging from dries to sweets uh places uh, is i i call it disneyland for adults it's just uh it's ridiculous how cool it is i mean it's a you want to be careful because you you you're not driving home um after that after that stop you we gotta found try everything you gotta try we, everything right yeah, absolutely we found a place like that uh monkey town brewing down at chickamauga when we was down there fishing a i love the name already Oh my gosh. It was <laughs> their strawberry tasted like a strawberry milkshake. I mean, it was insane. So it's awesome. Yeah. We was, Justin, we get equilibrium uh down here from New York. That's that's the that they did a project. I think they did a project with equilibrium brewery, uh out of oh, wow. Burlington. And uh mm-hmm. they so a local barbecue joint down in White River Junction, Vermont, uh called Big Fatties gets kegs. Uh, very small ke- pony kegs from Equilibrium, oh, and they last a week at that place. And it's that uh, it, it. I really do want to go travel through New York, and it the Vermont quality of water and New Hampshire quality of water mixed with some of these brewmasters. It was one of the things that got me out of the wine business. To be honest, I was <laughs> I was so into wine until I I know I I got to see what they were doing in Champlain Valley with growing hops. As they were, mm-hmm. as as grape growers grow grapes, they were growing hops, and you could taste these same hops made in different ways and different brews, different level of dry hops, and it it was amazing. One of the things I love to do for my clients is when they book a trip, is mm-hmm. I'll say, uh, you know, uh, pack some snacks, pack some water. Uh, do you happen to drink beer? Yes, I do. Well, when you get a good fish, you can have a victory beer. Ah, there you go. Yeah. Paddle back or at the truck while I'm loading. And, uh, you know, I kind of gauge what their taste is and kind of give them a little taste. Uh, I always go with, yeah. haven't been sponsored by them yet, but Frost Beer Works um, in Vermont. If you're is, Frost. Yes. If, I hope, I hope uh, Garen Frost is listening. He is from Orange County, California. <laughs> so he has that New England style but then takes right. the freshness of Vermont and, and just blends it in beautifully. But th- there's just nothing more satisfying after a day of fishing than just having a nice cold beer, even on a cold day makes you feel good. And nice. uh, the double IPA is at 8% while you're kayak fishing, not as much beer for the same effect. Same <laughs> effect. <laughs> you don't have now to talking about local brews and the different things, helping out kayak trips. I mean, when we go, when we're traveling to places, I mean, Chickamauga, Del Hollow, all these places in the South, there is always such cool places to eat. What is like, 
one of your favorite i mean do you guys associate when you travel like okay i'm going to lake x i'm going to restaurant x because i haven't had it since i was at the lake last i mean do you guys do that or am i the only one no you're not the only one i think that's i think that's the biggest part of of, of traveling for me is going back and 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 getting that burger that you had that was the best that you ever had or the chicken wings or you know or you know those those local area kind of snacks i mean geez that's that i love i love fish in different lakes and everything like that but it's all about the experience for me it's all about the the environment and the you know meeting up with friends and getting together with everybody mm -hmm. like that's what kayak fishing is all about to yeah. me um you know but but yeah it's all it's all around it you, it's all around food man it's all around food. <laughs> <laughs> i hear you i hear you no and it's it's every, fun. Every, everything tastes you know really good when you're hungry when you're right off the water but uh no doubt Absolutely. a lot of my a lot of my trips i go to lake maury in vermont mm -hmm. and fairly vermont uh this little town just 20 minutes north and uh they're getting a little bit bigger and the restaurants have, they have this one place called samurai soul food and so it's kind of an asian twist on some southern cuisine so they'll have uh you know, i think it was when i so i moved here from san diego and i went there maybe a week after i moved here and I said, what should I have? You should have the fish tacos. I said, I just moved here from San Diego. You want me to have your fish tacos? Just trust us. Have the fish tacos. And oh, I was that's when, that's when you know you got to have them. It was, it was like southern fried fish on a taco. And now they do these like tuna poke bowls. They have all the local craft brews from Vermont. And any of my clients that say, well, where should we go eat after this? And, uh, and now there's this burger joint, which I can't even say because I don't want anybody else to go there because they <laughs> sell out of food every day before you get, they open to sell out. Um, and it's, it's incredible, but yeah, just the, these small town kind of mm -hmm. up and coming uh, restaurants, they are pushing to the mm -hmm. wayside, the big city style restaurants, but the food yeah. is right up there. Um, and yeah, this, this is what New Orleans is all about. You take you take peasant cuisine like jambalaya and etouffee, <laughs> and you make it this rock star cuisine. And it's all about the sauce. It's all from the start of the roux or the stock. Um, yeah, and cool. it's it's always a, somebody does a great burger or a great pizza. And I'm always there when when somebody says where should we go after fishing, I will have a restaurant recommendation if I didn't bring the food. Right and, they, and that's how I always, every event that I always put on, whether it's NYKBF or, or, or anything, any live event will always end with the awards at a pub, restaurant, something on the lake, you know, that we're fishing that I can, you know, kind of bring it full circle. So my goal, I don't, you know, I really don't care if people have a good day on the water. I want them to, of course, I want them to have fun at the events. But I want them there at the at the event after at the at the weigh in, talking to everybody, t you know, saying if they had a good day or not, you know, you know, communicating about what went wrong, what you know, what went right, you know, and building those relationships and and having a good meal, having a you know, having a good experience afterwards, so that they associate the the group, the 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 the, the um activity of kayak fishing with a good right. with a good uh mind memory you know i think that's what it's all about mm. you just got to build that community and make people feel comfortable and i mean and uh, if you're you not know. catching fish there's one guy i fish with now he he does fish out of a hobie we're we're, <laughs> we're we'll, we'll get him there uh one of our guests <laughs> tonight by the way um uh, she is a hobie kayak fisher uh but she and i met on facebook because we're talking trailers and uh, she is here watching us tonight, so she is open cool. to the world of Jackson. But this friend of mine lives in Florida no half the year, no shade. He's lives her own. here half the year. And if we don't catch fish in the morning, I'll say, Steve, eat lunch. You got to eat your lunch. As soon as he starts <laughs> eating lunch, I start catching fish. And then when he's done, <laughs> he starts catching fish. And it's this weird thing that we have. So you oh, know, yeah. if you're out in the water and you're, you know you haven't eaten in a few hours, you're getting testy, 
The fish can yeah, feel it. The truth. Just like when you're riding snickers. a horse, the horse can feel that's when you're stressed. True. The fish can feel when you're stressed. Take a break. Eat something. Gotta delicious. bring. Gotta bring those peanut butter crackers, man. Gotta yeah. bring those yeah. peanut butter crackers. <clears throat> now, talking about local, um, obviously for kayak fishing, local is huge. But there is one thing that's also huge for the sport of kayak fishing, and that is supporting your local dealer. Um, I'll let you guys kind of talk about your local dealers and who you guys work with. Give your uh, give your favorite shop or not your favorite shop, Justin. Sorry, you team lead. You have lots of favorite <laughs> shops. Um, <laughs> Give your uh, give the shop that you guys work with the most a little shout out. Go ahead, Mike. Um, well, let's see. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna shout out for the, the whitewater community uh, down in Chattanooga because Rock Creek Outfitters. Uh, you know, one of my first really good times in a playboat was back. Gosh, 2005, 2006, uh, just when they started coming out, and there was un- unbelievable service down there. Um, but up here, uh, Marty at Outdoor New England, uh, th- the guy is, is a different level. Uh, we had the Jackson release party when they released those new whitewater boats and yeah, the Narvana. He, uh, yeah, the Narvana. It was, it was really cool. I, I said, Hey, uh, you know, I've got my daughter with me. Is it okay if I bring her by? And he said, well, I, I guess we'll have kids stuff. Yeah, sure. Bring her. And he's got two great dogs. It was great. She he let her unwrap the boats on live uh, on the release oh, for yeah. Jackson. He got to help yep. unwrap those, and which she loved. Cool. And uh, then when she saw it was a pink boat, she lost it. Um, <laughs> but you know, Jackson is quickly becoming one of those kayak brands that New England really hasn't seen much of, and people are very surprised on the difference of of the kayaks, not, not just their durability, but their, their ease of transportation. And then just the, the company itself and how widespread it is in the United States. But one of the things that stuck out, I was, I didn't want to be rude and leave, you know, and drink Marty's beer and, and you know, just get out of here. But he was, he was gone. And I, I looked at the other guys at the shop, Joe, and uh, he said, yeah, he went off with uh, the governor and the mayor. I said, who is this guy? You know, he disappears from the shop, <laughs> the governor and the mayor. I'm like, all right, I, I got, I got to stay in touch with this guy. Uh, he's very ingrained in the community. When you drive into Franklin, New Hampshire, uh, there are flower pots lining the streets of Franklin made out of decommissioned kayaks. And cool. most of them, you know, they came from outdoor New England. Um, right. You know, they have a play wave right there. They have a park, they have kids programs. When the water's too low, they put the kids on boogie boards. Um, right. but the, the shop itself, the, the way that they treat you as part of the community, not just a consumer is really mm-hmm. cool. And, and that's, that's where, awesome. that's where kayaking comes from. That's where it will always stay. And guys, awesome. Uh, yesterday he stole my photo that I posted on Facebook <laughs> on Jackson kayak owners page. I haven't even gotten to my page yet. And it's on his <laughs> Instagram and then sends a message. Hey, man, sorry. I didn't know if it was okay if I stole your photo. Like, hey, dude, you tagged me. I'm fine. Whatever. You know, we, we have a mutually beneficial relationship. I have no problem sending. I look forward to sending any of my clients that say, where do I get a kayak? And I will send them there. Very cool. Yeah. I, you know, I think that's what it's all about, man. I think uh, I think that right there is, uh, you know, what makes a true pro staff individual is is they're out in the community they're helping you know the 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 people that are selling the boats you know it's it's one thing to just you know say you're a pro staffer and you know kind of get the get the benefits of it but to be out there and you know showcasing your boat to showcasing the the beauty of what makes a local dealer uh special i mean that that, i mean that's what it's all about it's not you know it's it's just who you are. It's pretty cool. I mean, uh, yeah, you said, Chad, I mean, I, tournament, you know, team lead in, in the Northeast here, I, you know, all of our dealers are special. I think everybody's got a lot of cool things going on in the Northeast, which is really, it's an, it's still an up, up and coming area for kayaking, kayak fishing. And I, I'm okay yeah. with saying that it's just, it's catching on, it's booming, it's growing fast. Um, you know, my my local dealer uh morgan marine right down the road from me uh brand new dealer this year this past year 
um, you know, jumped on with Jackson and uh, took a whole array of wreck to wreck and fishing kayaks and took what he could get in the beginning of the year because everything yep. was really spoken for and they didn't know what they could get. And, you know, just started, uh, you know, getting things over the year. And, um, uh, you know, I think they really showcase what, uh, a, what Jackson kayak is looking for in a dealer because they are family run. They're, they're right on the lake. They're, uh, you know, they're always willing to do stuff to help the community, uh, to help the area and to help the sport of kayak fishing. Uh, you know, I can't, I, I manage and, you know, I, I oversee the, the owners groups on Facebook, um, as well for, for Jackson. And I see it every, every day I'll see, you know, what, what Jackson is right for me, you know, or what Jackson, what Jackson should I get? I like, I'm this big and I fish this type of lake. And, you know, part of that is just look at the, look at the dealer map, you know, right. go check out, go check out your dealer, say hello you know, touch the boats, feel, you know, a lot of, a lot of dealers have free demoing, yep. get on the water, try them. You can't, you know, somebody from two States over, I mean, they're, they might have experience that you can, you can take their comments with a, with a grain of salt, but they're not you, you know, right. you, you got, you know, you got to get on the boat, especially if you want to, you know, drop this amount of investment, which I, I call Jackson kayak, your forever boat. Cause you're never going to outgrow it. You're never going to, you know, true it's always going to be there. It's, uh, it's going to be there for it forever for you. So, um, make that right investment and try the boat, get on the water and learn it. And you can't do that without these local dealers and, and they're pretty special people. So I think they, they make, they make Jackson what it's all about. Yeah. Preach. I know I'm preaching. <laughs> it's, true. it's true. It's true. And not, and not for nothing, Mike, this, Caitlin over here in the chat, I think you need to put the, her comment up here because she is not selling your ice fishing, uh, you know, too well um, that her that the beers are frozen. Uh, <laughs> well, okay. I've been looking at that did, comment for 20 minutes. <laughs> at, at night, okay. We, we went fishing at night. You know, and I warned them it was going to be cold. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But. But yeah, Caitlin, no. don't tell him how cold this is. You know, we need, we need, we need to have <laughs> you guys are from the Northeast. It's cold, cold. Well, you, we'll we'll put the jacket on you. You know, we'll, we'll give you the costume from Fargo. That's what we'll give you. Done, Ralphie okay. from A Christmas Story. If I can put my hands down, I am not wearing enough. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys as we wrap this up we are an hour and 50, gonna be an hour and 15 minutes in so with that being said we're gonna wrap this show up i'm gonna let you guys tell the people where to find you on the socials uh thank any sponsorships that you guys need to thank jackson kayak and beyond and uh yeah so whoever wants to go first take your shot go um, ahead some more sponsors than i do <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, you guys can find me, uh, American Kayaker, on uh, Facebook and Instagram, YouTube. Um, also, uh, check out nykbf.com um, and uh, nykbf on all the socials as well. We do a lot of fun things. Uh, some pretty cool things going on next year. We're actually partnering with all of the tournament series in New York State. There's six of them, um, and we are partnering with all six to bring a pretty, uh, pretty epic, uh, event in October. So, uh, look into that, check that out. That's going to be pretty fun. Uh, thanks Jackson kayak, bending branches, Noqua, um, uh, savior, you guys, uh, you know, even my people, they, you know, me, they're awesome. Um, and, uh, uh, Orion coolers, of course, right, Chad? Yeah. Gotta have your <laughs> Orion cooler. Yeah. yeah I know. Cooler. It's, Got beer in it upstairs. I got to I do like your Jackson kayak uh, button there in the background, though. That's cool. Like that? I like that. That looks good. You don't have one of those? Come on. I don't have one of those. I, oh, I, I, I hung mine time. in the garage. Like R Rob Yeager gave me one of those and this hat for helping him unload that, yep, that yep. truck. Yeah. There you go. No, I miss the buttons, but I know where there's a big neon sign sitting right now, and it's a race <laughs> now between myself and Jameson Redding to get this neon sign. I want that. I want that neon sign. I've seen those in uh, some of our local dealers. I know where there's those one look hidden. Nice. I know where there's one hidden. I know who's got the key. 
<laughs> Who's got the key? <laughs> <laughs> then you should have it already. You were just there last last week. I was just there Friday. Um, Jameson was supposed to actually take it. He's got seniority, so he got first dibs. I don't know. I think he's it. got enough Jackson stuff. I, I think, he I think you're so, the one that's on the podcasts all the time. I think that would look really nice in the background. It would look so, I mean, just, just right there. Just I mean, right it's marketing, there. man. You got to you gotta plan that. Yeah. I mean, my Dell Hollow sign Jameson is doing cool, for marketing. Though. He's not doing anything. Yeah. Dell Hollow sign is cool. It needs to come lower, cool. though. That so it's cool. more in the frame. That's I cool. did not steal that. I bought that fair and square. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, Mike. What do you got? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at TBC Guides. Uh, my Facebook is also TBC Guide Services. Uh, so TBC, uh, once I loaded the garage in our house with all of my gear, uh, our family, we just started calling it The Blatt Cave. My name is Mike Blatt, B-L-A-T-T. So we called it The Blatt Cave. So TBC was born. Um, and mm-hmm. I am up right, I'm about a half mile down the road from Dartmouth. So mm-hmm. if you guys down south or anywhere in the country, your kids are looking, uh, Dartmouth is now giving out scholarships instead of trying to get you to borrow money. So your kids looking at colleges, come up to Dartmouth, come kayak fishing up here. When pre and pre spawn and spawn happen everywhere else in the U.S. up here, it's June. So come up here for your summer vacation. You are hitting pre spawn and spawn bass, and it is absolutely amazing. And uh, come ice fishing. You know, it's if you've never done it, you know we're gonna get Justin out there. Uh, one of our viewers. Every time you go ice, I know. Fishing, I know. Just no, like, no. Uh. One, one of our viewers tonight. Uh, <laughs> uh, she. Moved from Texas to Virginia. She said that's as far north as she's ever going. Until she <laughs> ice fishes. I mean, all you need is the right day. But I um, told you I'll do it. You invite me. You invite me <laughs> out, and I will do it. But we'll do, I, we'll I, do a whole I, YouTube. We'll do a whole YouTube thing about it. It was It'll thirty. It was thing. thirty degrees today, and I was ready to put on gloves. Right. <laughs> just saying. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm also going to thank On the Water Innovations just because these guys have been awesome. I'll refer people to them and they refer people up here. Uh, and my biggest sponsor of all, my wife, she is the reason that we're here. She is a recent graduate. Graduate. Uh, she just graduated from Dartmouth last year with her MBA and we decided to stay here. And she is the reason that all of this has even happened. So yeah, she's my biggest sponsor and uh, she still hasn't been out kayak fishing with me. She only goes kayaking, but she did go ice fishing with me and saw the look on her mother's face when she pulled in the biggest bass I've ever seen out of the ice. So she, she was kind of hooked, but uh, yeah, those, those, those are the people I'm going to thank. And again, being part of the Jackson kayak fishing team, I, I really can't wait to do more with the company and, uh, and I don't know, maybe, maybe get back into whitewater. You know, it's, it's never too late. No, it's never too late. But, Mike, you cut, me, you cut me off um, earlier and uh, I was also going to um, thank my wife. I'm not thanking Sorry. mine. She's not listening. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for tonight. kids. this is the worst outro music ever. <laughs> Is that my death? Is because I didn't thank my I didn't thank Mary. It's like I don't know what that is. Thanks for listening, guys. We appreciate you all. We'll see you in two weeks. Um, eleven three. Yeah, November. Coming at you guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Who picks this music? Streamyard.